In this video, we will look at groups and sets. Groups and sets both allow us to put related values together. But how are they different? When do we use one over the other? Let's explore these questions in this video. I'll see you in a bit. In my head, I think I know what groups and sets are. And to me, they really sound like the same thing. The first thing that comes to mind when I try to visualize group or set in my head is a group of friends or a number of things that's similar or related, like a set of drawing materials or a set of toys. If you've been watching my videos, you'd know I like consulting the dictionary. It helps me understand what certain terminologies may mean. So I went to vocabulary.com and interestingly, the definition of a group uses the word set and the definition of a set uses the word group. Go figure. So I think we can conclude that they are really very similar. But as far as Tableau is concerned, groups and sets have distinct differences and uses. Let's talk about groups first, and then we'll focus on sets. And at the end of the video, we will recap their similarities and differences. I have added chapters in the description should you want to skip the specific topics. I hope you will consider watching the whole video as there may be new tidbits about groups and sets that you can discover. Groups in Tableau allow us to organize and combine different values under a single label. We can use this for both dimension or measure values, and the visual cue of a group is a paperclip. Think of what a paperclip is used for. It's to put together pieces of paper. Paper clips allow us to organize the stack of paper better or to carry it around as a single unit. In some ways, this is how Tableau groups work. Let's jump into Tableau and take a look at how groups work. If you already have a visual, you can select the headers of the values that you want to put together in a group. For example, if we want to take paper all the way to fasteners and make them into a group. Once you have these selected, you can wait for the tooltip to show up and in the command bar, you can select the paperclip. Another option is in your toolbar. So these are the exact same icons. Yet another way is to right click on your selection and select group. And note that this also has the paperclip icon. Before I group these, I want you to pay attention to what happens in your canvas. Specifically, look for changes in your sidebar. And in this case, Look for changes in the subcategory pill in your row shelf. So let's group these. The distinct changes that have happened is now you have a brand new field in your sidebar. So if this is a brand new group, it would have created a brand new field for you that contains the grouped values. Visually, what also has happened is it has combined all those values into a single label, and it has also created a total for all of those values. The pill in your row has also changed. It has been swapped. This used to be subcategory. Now this is showing the subcategory group. The original subcategory group still exists, so we can still display it if we want to. Typically with groups, we would change what we call an alias so that we can change this value into something that is more readable. So for example, we can right click here. We can edit the alias. Maybe let's call this stationary. So let's remove subcategory first. If we want to make any further changes on our group, we can select all those values again and repeat the same exercise. So in here, click on the paper clip. Another place where we can make edits to our groups is to right click on the field in your sidebar, edit group. And this is where we're going to see which values have been put into which groups. We can also rename from this area. So if we highlight a group, we can simply rename Let's call this group one. We can expand the groups to inspect which values are there. We can move things around and add additional values into these groups. We also have options to ungroup. And if we want any values that have not been selected into a group to be part of a catch all group, we can select include other. Let's try that out. So now we are left with these three groups. 
One thing to note though is groups are static. If we want to make any changes, we have to go back to this group and then manually make the change. So for example, if I wanted to add copiers to stationary, I have to go here and manually adjust it myself. Let's delete this and I want to show you another way to create groups. Let's delete this group first. Let's add subcategory again. Let's sort this. Now we can also create groups by selecting not the header, but the marks. So in this case, we have a bar graph. If we simply select the bars, we can also create a group. Now note in here that the experience will be slightly different. It does the exact same thing. It creates a group, but what you're going to see visually is going to be different. So before I create the group, pay attention to what happens in your sidebar, pay attention to what happens in your row shelf, and this time around, pay attention to what happens to your marks card. So let's group these. And this is what happened. Let's expand this first. So the experience right now is very different from the first one. The first time we created a group, that we took all these values, collapsed them all under a single label, and added all of the sales together. However, if what you select are the marks, in this case, the bars, what it does is it still creates the group in your sidebar. However, it does not replace what's in your row shelf right now. All it does is it actually places the group under color. So you're still seeing the breakdown of each individual subcategory. However, they are not collapsed. It's not adding all of those totals because what you're showing is still all of the raw subcategory values. The takeaway in here is it did the same thing, but it just placed group into a different place. Earlier, it was placed in the row shelf. It completely replaced whatever was there before. But if you group it using the marks, it's actually going to put it under the caller shelf. Groups allow us to organize, and typically groups will go hand in hand with hierarchies. So in this case, we may decide to create a hierarchy for our subcategory groups. So we can simply drag subcategory on top of our group field. Let's call this our subcategory hierarchy. Make sure that's spelled right. And if we decide to display the group, what this allows us to do is it allows us to expand and take a look at the members in the group. So what will be a use case for a group? If, for example, you have a data set that has slight misspellings, for example, if you have a list of countries, but some of the countries are slightly misspelled, you can use groups to organize and correct the data from a Tableau perspective. Another use case is really just organizing your data. Let's create a brand new worksheet. Let's just simply display our product names. Expand this. So in here right now, we can see that there are so many values. There's almost 2,000 products in our data source. But what if you wanted to find all refrigerators and all clocks? One thing we can do is to create groups out of these keywords. So this time around, I'm going to right click on product name. I'm going to create a group and there is a find option in here. If you don't see this actual window, it may be minimized at this point, so you can just expand this. But we can create groups based on string matches or keyword matches. For example, again, if we are looking for refrigerator, we can find all of them. Notice the Tableau actually highlights whatever it has found, and we can group all of these. So let's call all of these refrigerators. Let's look for another one. Let's look for clocks find all, and then group. Let's call this clock. And this time around, we're just going to include other. Click OK. If we display this group, we should be able to see that it has found clocks, it has found refrigerators, and anything else is under other. So groups are helpful in organizing data, but they're static. If we need to make any changes, we have to manually go in and make the changes in our groups. A few more things worth noting is we can create groups from dimensions. For example, in here, customer name, we can create a group out of these. We can also create groups from groups. So for example, we already have a product name group right now. We can right click, we can create a group out of this group. So right now, if I still wanted to create a group out of refrigerators and clocks, I can group those, click OK. So now I have a group of a group. We can also create groups out of measure values. For example, if I right click on profit, I can create a group out of this measure. 
If we create a group out of a measure, each measure value is going to be considered as a discrete value. So we're going to have to select all of these manually and create a group out of that. Once we create this group, it is going to be a discrete dimension in Tableau. Let's now look at sets. Sets allow us to organize our data and put related dimension values together. Unlike groups, you can only create sets on dimension values, but not measure values. And also unlike groups, sets are more flexible and can allow for automatic member assignments, meaning you don't have to manually adjust values. These could be automatically assigned based on certain conditions or thresholds. We can also do operations between sets, which introduce new and sometimes simpler ways of analyzing our data. Let's refer to a picture I used in an earlier slide. Here, what we see are drawing materials. We have a set of pastels and a set of colored pens. Both are available in multiple colors. What if we wanted a list of all of these regardless of whether they're pens or pastels? Or what if we wanted only anything that's yellow or anything that is pastel but not yellow? These are the kinds of questions sets can help us answer. Let's jump into Tableau and see how it works. One way we can create a set is if we already have a visualization, we can simply select the marks of the values that we want to be part of this set. For example, we can select some of these marks. We can hover over and wait for the command bar to show up. And from here, we can create a set. Alternatively, we can also right click and create a set from here. This is what we would call a fixed or a static set because there are no conditions that allow for automatic assignment. The values that we add here right now are going to be the values of this set until we decide to change it or adjust it. Let's call this one a fixed set. Now let's check how sets look like. In a new worksheet, let's have a look at how groups look like again. So when we drag over a group, remember that groups allow us to have a single label for multiple members in that group. Let's drag this out. A set is slightly different. When we drag over our fixed set, by default, what this gives us is in or out because sets are really all about memberships. If we wanted to know which values are inside the set or outside the set, we can take our original field and drag it over so we can see the values that are inside the set and outside the set. Let's take this out. Another alternative we have is if we only want to see which values are within the set, we can also click on this drop down, and instead of showing just in and out of the set, we can show members in the set. So let's try this out on the drop down, show members in the set. Let's go back to the previous graph. Another type of set we can create is what we call a dynamic set. This is dynamic because the members or the values within the set can change, and these can change either based on conditions, thresholds, or even user interactivity. Let's try to create a couple of dynamic sets right now. I'm going to right click on customer ID and from here, create a set. And this window should remind us of a filters window. We see the usual tabs in here. We can select certain values. We can select all, we can select none. There's also a condition tab and it allows us to put in a condition or even type in our own formula. And we also have the top tab. The top tab allows us to rank our values and select either the top values that match that condition or the bottom values that match that condition. So let's try this first. I'm going to create a top 50 based on the total sales. So let's look for sales. Let's call this top. 50 customers by sales. Let's click on OK. This is a dynamic set, which means that if next month we have a brand new customer who buys a lot from us, that customer ID will automatically be added into this set. And some of the current members might fall off the set. Let's create one more dynamic set. Let's right click on customer ID again. Let's create a set. And this time around, Let's create one that is for the bottom 50 customers. Let's click on the top tab by field. This time around, we're going to select the bottom. This is the bottom 50. And this time, let's take a look at a different measure. Let's look at profit. Let's call this bottom 50 customers by profit. 
One feature that makes sets really flexible and powerful is the ability to combine multiple sets together. We can operate on two sets at a time. So for example, I have the top 50 customers and the bottom 50 customers. I can select both of those by control clicking them. When I right click right now, I would have an option to create a combined set. So let's right click, create a combined set. These two overlapping circles are what we call Venn diagrams. And we usually use these when we are doing what we call set operations. So these are the general operations we can do on two sets. Remember, this is going to be two sets at a time. We can either get all members in both sets. We also call this a union. We can also get shared members in both sets, meaning the values have to exist in both sets, and we call this an intersect. Or we can also choose values that exist in one set, but not the other. And this operation is called a difference. In some database management systems, the actual operator might be called an accept. So for this particular example, let's take a look at the shared members. I'm going to call this my top 50 by sales, bottom 50 by profit. Let's click OK. Now this generates for us a brand new field. Now we can choose to use sets in different ways. We can display this as either an in or an out. So in this case, if we display this in columns, this gives us two graphs. One graph that has only members that meet both conditions and other members that don't meet those conditions. We can also decide to put these sets in color. We could potentially put this in size as well if that's our intent. And in this case, if you wanted to highlight the customers that are in the intersection, we can also reverse our size. I can double click on the size legend and simply reverse the sizes. Click on Apply, click on OK. Tableau has also recently introduced set controls. Now, set controls are only available for dynamic sets, and they're also not available for combined sets. For example, remember we created a fixed set? If I right-click on this fixed set, I don't have an option to show set. However, if we take a look at the bottom 50 customers by profit, we should see an option to show set. This will be available as well for the top 50 customers by sales. Right click, we have show set in here. This is going to look very similar to our filter controls, but our combined set, the top 50 sales and the bottom 50 by profit, this will also not have the option to show set control. One more important thing to note is we can only operate on sets that are coming from the same dimension values. So for example, if I have a set on product name, so let's right click on product name, create a set. Let's call this the bottom 50 based on profit as well. So in here, bottom 50 based on profit. This is my bottom 50 products. And let's select the two bottom 50 sets. So control click. And when we right click, we actually do not have any option to combine these. But remember earlier when we had bottom 50 customers and top 50 customers by sales, because these are like values, they're coming from the same dimensions, we do have an option to create combined sets. Now let's take a look at a few more examples where sets can be used. If we want to show values that belong to both top and bottom ranking in the same view, we could use sets. For example, if we wanted to show the top products and the bottom products by profit, we can create two sets and create a combined set. Let's right click on product name, create, set. Let's create one for top products under the top tab by field. For this example, I'm going to create a parameter. So in here, create a new parameter. I'm just going to call this number of products. And we're just going to select allowable values to all. So it's going to be a text box where we can type in any number. Let's click on OK. And we need to make sure that the measure we're using is profit. So use profit right here. Click OK. Let's create one more set on product name. Right click, create, set. Let's call this one bottom products. And under the top tab, by field, this time around, we're going to use bottom. And we are going to use the parameter we've just created, number of products. And let's make sure we're also using profit. 
if we wanted to create a combined set, let's select both bottom products. So control click and also the top products, right click, create a combined set. And for this, we want to retain all members in both sets. So let's call this top and bottom products. Now let's create a bar graph with all of our product names. Let's also display the profit and sort. We can use our combined set to filter what we are showing in the view right now. So top and bottom products onto filter. And this should show us both top and bottom products by profit all in the same view. Another common use case for sets is what we call proportional brushing. Let's take our top products for example. Let's go to a new worksheet and let's start simple. Perhaps we only want to see the overall profit. I'm going to drag profit over to columns. I'm going to set this to entire view and I'm going to take the top product set and put that in color. Let's also just rearrange our cards. I'm going to move our color legend right underneath the marks card. And I'm also going to swap the order of the colors. So drag in underneath out. What this shows us is the overall share of our top 10 products in our overall profit. Now we can add some additional information in here. So I'm simply going to copy profit onto label. And I'm also going to add a quick table calculation on our pill in columns. So on the drop down, quick table calculation, percent of total. And let's copy this percent of total on label as well. What this tells us is our top 10 products make up 23% of our overall profit. We can add additional dimensions in this chart. For example, if we wanted to understand this from a region perspective, we can take region, put that in rows, and this now shows us our profit proportion for each region. We can also add back our totals. So under the analytics tab, we can double click on totals. This is a simple but a powerful example of how we can use sets in Tableau. In future videos, we will look at additional use cases for sets and specifically showcasing some additional functionalities like set controls and set actions and how to use formulas and calculations when we are defining our sets. So let's recap what we've talked about. In terms of visual cues, groups have a paperclip icon and sets have a Venn diagram. Groups are fixed, they're pretty static, and if you need to add additional values or remove existing values, you have to manually adjust them. Sets can either be fixed or dynamic. We can create conditions that allow memberships to happen. By default, groups create a single label for all of the members of the group. However, for set, by default, it actually gives you an in and out value. There is additional option to show members in the set as well. Groups can be created with dimensions or measures, but sets can only be created with dimensions. Both groups and sets can be the foundation of additional groups and sets. So we can create a group out of a group and a set out of a set. But one big difference between groups and sets is we can operate on sets. When we're working with two sets, we can create a union, an intersect, or a difference. We can identify memberships based on some of the questions we're trying to answer. This is it for our comparison on groups and sets. I hope you found this video useful. I hope there were some new tidbits you've learned. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time.